louder. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, awesome. We have a song to start a service off. Feel free to stand if you need to sit. Feel free to sit. But stand and sing, if, uh, your, sing your heart out. <laughs> Well, friends, it's so good to have you here today, and I want to say welcome to those who are joining us online. Our services are being recorded. Uh, it is not being streamed today, but uh, it will be uploaded later in the service. Just a few announcements to share with you. Uh, starting uh, uh, tomorrow, or I should say a little later today, I'll be on holidays for two weeks. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting clapping, but uh, so happy to see me gone for two weeks. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I'm looking forward to that rest for sure. And, uh, and so uh, the office will be closed during that time. Uh, and if there is an emergency, you can send a text to me. Uh, that's probably the best way, text or email. Uh, you know me, I like to hike, so often when I'm hiking, my phone is in my, my backpack. So, like I said, best thing to do is just send me a text if, if it's an emergency. And if it's something that's not an emergency, let it wait until I'm back. And that would be, I would, would appreciate that, you know, and it would be good. Um, so, talking about some things happening, we have a church bonfire this Wednesday, just looking at the forecast. Uh, it is calling for uh, storms that day. 
If, if there is a storm that day, then uh, the bonfire will be canceled. There is no rain date for that because we're also going to be having some events in August. Uh, so if you look out your window and there's thunder and lightning, pretty much guaranteed that there won't be a, a bonfire, okay? Use your best judgment. The bonfire is at uh, Dennis's house. Dennis and Betty Mills is hosting the bonfire. And so, uh, yeah, and I know Dennis is uh, helping someone that day. And so uh, you can always give him a call later. He'll be on the road. So you might not get a, a phone call right away if you're curious. But anyway, so there would be a bonfire that day, hopefully. Sometimes the forecast is wrong. So hopefully we can have that bonfire. Uh, and um, by the way, Tina and I will not be at the bonfire because um, we've got some plans for this week. So there you go. Um, also, we uh, are looking for help with our coffee, uh, our refreshments after the service. It's one of those things that we've seen through the pandemic that it, now having that time of fellowship uh, is really important to uh, help our church stay connected, you know, and it's amazing what uh, a bit of coffee can do. And so if you're able to help, uh, it's not a, a huge demand in the sense of a huge time commitment. If you're able to help, uh, talk with Sylvie. And she can uh, show you how to run the coffee machines and the tea and all that kind of stuff. And again, like I said, it's this month where we need... Is anyone signed up, Sylvie? Or is it... So in the next three weeks, are all open. So if you can be of help, that would be great. Also, talking about needing help... Uh, we were at the farmer's market this week. Uh, we, yeah, we had a great time, met a few families and connected. Our Noah's Ark beanbag toss game was a lot of fun. The uh, craft, the activity was planting uh, seeds. And, uh, kids were leaving with a bean plant, seed planted, and they had their own little pot, and they, and they had uh, a little journal to keep track of watching it grow and things like that, so it's exciting stuff. Uh, we do need some extra help with that. Uh, uh, right now, we only have one person who is going to be at the uh, beginning, at the opening, which is uh, uh, the farmer's market starts at 3, but we're here at the church to get the materials and all that. What time? 2 o'clock. And so uh, we just need help. There's others who are going to be coming later, but we need help at 2 o'clock. And all you do is you meet here at the church, get the supplies, and then uh, uh, spend your time at the market for a few hours and... Uh, you don't have to be there for the whole time. Um, the farmer's market goes from 2 to 7. Okay, there you go. Even Look at the time's even getting shorter. So really, yeah. yeah. So if, you, if, if someone can be of help, 3 uh, to 5. So you guys are filling in for me because that's when I was actually signed up for. But uh, I'll be away. Yeah, big shoes to fill, right? Size size 10, so there you go. Uh, anyway, if you can uh, be of, of help in that area, talk with Sylvie, just let her know so that she knows that she's not he there by herself. So I've talked about the farmer's market, I've talked about refreshments, I've talked about the church bonfire. There you go. And that's all our announcements. So we are going to start our service with a call to worship, which is Psalm 138. And, uh, and we'll begin now. Psalm 138. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down towards your holy temple and will praise your name for your unfailing love and your faithfulness. For you have so exalted your solemn decrees that it surpasses your fame. When I called, you answered me. You greatly emboldened me. May all the kings of the earth praise you, Lord, when they hear of what you have decreed. May they sing of the ways of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord is great. Though the Lord is exalted, he looks kindly on the midst of troubles. You preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes. With your right hand, you save me. The Lord will vindicate me. Your love, Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we greatly rejoice in you. We give you thanks for your unfailing love and for your faithfulness. We honor and praise you. Lord, let your spirit flow amongst us today as we worship you. Let your love bind us together and strengthen us in our faith. In Jesus' name, we pray.
Amen. Amen. All right, we have some more songs at this time. Feel free to stand and please sing along. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, it's time to sing your song again. my 
my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. Submission, perfect delight Visions of rapture now burst on my sight Angels descending bring from above Echoes of mercy, whispers of love This is my story, this is my song Praising my Savior song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching, waiting, looking above, filled with His good. My story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. Wow, we're missing some kids, that's for sure. At this time in our services, Kids Corner, and because we don't have kids here, I'm still going to go ahead with it because 
whatever I share here, I hope you share with the kids in your life. Either be a family member or a neighbor or, or just say hi to someone and start sharing these stories with them. Well, guys, I've got in my hand here one of our children's church bulletins. By the way, if you're on our weekly email, you get this bulletin every week. Uh, it's just there in your weekly email. That's from the church. If you notice that this thing has full of games and different activities to do, but some of it is about coloring. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I love coloring. I love color. I'm always... Uh, my eyes are drawn to bright colors and all that. And so to do stuff to relax, I sometimes color. Yeah, I pull out the pencil crayons and things like that. And I have fun with that. I got to say, my wife and my daughter, they do a lot better job. I can color in the lines, but they do a lot better job uh, with coloring and all that. I'm always impressed with them stuff. Uh, I am going to share uh, a couple of little and things that my daughter had colored years ago. She'd kill me if she knew I was sharing these with you. So oh, I'm getting hooked on this thing. Don't mind me. There's a little thing for a microphone here, and it got pulled on there. But anyway, this was one of those things that she gave me years ago. Dad's idea of fun. And uh, unfortunately, I can't find the third one. This was a, a gift she gave me for one of my birthdays, and I've held on to it. And it's so funny. She's got me... She's got me uh, driving a race car and having fun with that, jumping off the race car and doing some climbing, mountain climbing, uh, going from the mountain climbing top, jumping off and uh, using one of those squirrel suits to sail across the, the uh, sky to land on a sea dew. And uh, I forget all the other ones that she had, it was a few pages. But I got to say, when I look at this, all just black and white and just penciled out versus all of these wonderful pictures that she has of me. No, she gave me a bald, bald head, not a single hair on that. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of spit and polish and that thing would glow. But there you go. But in saying that, um, I think these stand out so much more than just a uh, black and white. And, uh, you know, when I think about that, I think about the fact that uh, you know, what adds to is all these kind of colors that we have, right? We have colors here, and I just dropped a couple, so I'm going to pick that up before I trip on it. And you don't want to see the pastor go flying, do you? Hopefully not. But, you know, we got all these colors here, right? And this made me think that we're a lot like these colors. And that is that each of us is a different color, and together, look at that, I'm getting caught again. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, we're all these, uh, we're all different colors, and God created us that way for a purpose, and that purpose is to be a part of the work that he has done. See, God has a plan, and he's got all the, the pictures drawn out. He has a plan, and it's all drawn out. It's all crystal clear, but he invites us as the colors, to fill in that plan, to create this beautiful uh, picture, just rich with colors and diversity and all that. And so it's exciting to know that even though God is this omnipotent, all-powerful being, that he invites us to be a part of the work he is doing in this world, that each of us have a little job to color in a little part of that big picture of it. I have scripture for you. It's Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. It says, for we are God's handiwork. I like that. We are God's handiwork. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. And that, that even answers part of that question of why are we here? You know, God's word says we were created to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do to do. There you go. Let's pray. Dear God, we just thank you for what you're doing both in our world and in us. Thank you that you invite us to be a part of the work you are doing. Help us, Lord, to use our gifts, our abilities, and our strength to help color in the masterpiece you are creating. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now you're probably just dying to color. Well, you can because I can, I've can. sent you those uh, children's church bulletins so you can print that off and have fun coloring it at home. 
Awesome stuff. Well, for guys, we're moving into uh, my sermon. Uh, we're turning back to James chapter 3. We've been working through the book of James. And so we are in James chapter 3, and we're reading verses 13 to 18. Now, last week, as we studied the first section of chapter 3, uh, we saw how our tongues, that is our speech, can be a powerful force in our lives. Our tongues, as we saw, have the power to direct our lives. That is, what we choose to say, what we choose to allow come, to come out of our mouth, uh, can affect our lives both in good ways and bad ways. I shared the example of how former President Ronald Reagan, uh, when he was preparing for a weekly radio address, jokingly uh, set, shared that he had outlawed Russia and that United States would be, be, uh, would be uh, bombing them momentarily. You know, that joke ended up being made public. And uh, when it made, became public, it was during the time of the Cold War. Russia is a nuclear power. United States was a nuclear power. Tensions were already tense. And it's like, hey, I'm going to bomb you. Nope. Mm, you don't want to do that. It was not good. It just went around the world and had uh, um, geopolitical uh, effects for a while. And we saw last week also, we saw how uh, the power of our tongue or the power of speech has the potential to destroy. And when we think of uh, the nasty words, probably what comes to our minds is those nasty words that other people unleash on us. You know, you see something about road rage and someone uh, lets loose with a tirade of, of uh, comments and derogatory terms and everything else. And, you know, that hurts. And we know that hurts. Even, even if you don't know the person and you say it doesn't matter, it still hurts. It upsets us, right? But we also saw last week, I shared how there's been studies that when we choose to use negative words, that it actually has an impact on us. We often think if we say something, we're lobbing it out to the other person. We're dumping it on them and, ah, well, don't we feel better? But studies have shown that when we use uh, negative words, it has a physiological effect, meaning it affects our bodies. Stu uh, tests show, scans show, uh, blood tests show with hormones that when we use negative words, we release stress and anxiety-inducing hormones. That's right. Your body goes into that fight mode, which releases the stress hormones. And I mean, that's great in the moment kind of thing to give you lots of energy. But over time, that affects our bodies in a negative way. It can do things like lower our immune system. It can even lower our outlook on life. You want to start unleashing bad words. It's going to make you start thinking that this is a bad world. And we also saw last week that uh, our tongues, our speech have... Um, a positive effect as well. They can be a blessing. They can delight. It has the power to delight. Positive talk, for example, has been proven to increase, increase athletes' endurance. Yeah. You know, when you're, you're doing something and your body's tired and you just keep saying to yourself, I can do this. I can do this. There's only a few minutes more. You can do this. Guess what? You do it. It's pretty awesome. So I, I summed up last week's sermon with this. And I wonder if you remember it. Control your tongue or your tongue will control you. Now that's all nice and dandy. And we heard that message and it was like, you know what? Uh, that's great. That's great. I'm going to do a better job at controlling my tongue. You know, let me say that last week's message wasn't intended to heap guilt on people. You know, I wasn't pointing fingers at anyone here. It was intended to be an encouragement. I mean, if you are struggling with what comes out of your mouth, just let you know we're all a work in progress. Um, you know, that's what it is to grow. And, and any time we're trying to improve ourselves, any time we're trying to be a better person, any time we're trying to be more like Jesus, it always helps when we get an outside source of help, when we get some help doing that. So today's scripture actually will help us in this battle to not only walk the talk, but to control our tongues. So we're going to read our scripture, but before we do, let us pray. Oh, Lord, as we uh, pause here before we turn to the Bible, we do so to ask for your help in understanding both the scripture that we're going to read and to understand how it applies to our lives. Lord, open your word to us, speak to us, guide us, and use this time to refine us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 
Amen. All right, let's read James chapter 3, verse 13 to 18, where it says, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder in every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap of a harvest of righteousness. Awesome stuff. So a big part of our lives is what we do, uh, what we do with our time. And, and what we do with our time is our jobs, right? A big part of our lives and uh, the thing that takes up a lot of our time is our jobs. Be it a baker, be it a doctor, be it a painter, a teacher, or whatever profession or employment you have, our jobs is a big part of what we focus on each day. Now, here's the thing. You may not know this, but when a person accepts Christ in their life as their Savior, they get a job. Yeah, it's part of the package. You get a job. So let me be a little bit more direct. If you have accepted Christ, answer that question to yourself. If you've accepted Christ as your Savior, guess what? You've been given a job. That's right. Once saved, you're hired. Once saved, you're hired. You've got a job for life. And what is that job you might be asking yourself, thinking, uh oh, what am I missing? Well, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20 says, We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. When you became a Christian, you were automatically qualified. And we're hired to be Christ's ambassador to this world. Now, an ambassador's job is what? It's to represent something. Represent a government. Represent a person, right? So that sounds like a big responsibility. You know, if I had to represent a country, like say be Canada's ambassador to the United Nations, that's a pretty big job with a lot of responsibilities. But now just think how much bigger of a responsibility it is when you realize you were hired to represent Jesus, the son of God. You know, and a lot of times when we think about school, we think of, I mean, at work, we think about all the schooling that some jobs require. You know, there are jobs where you spend years and years in school, and then you have to go on and do like apprenticeships or whatever, all this kind of stuff. And there's all this stuff before they say, congratulations, you are qualified to actually do this job. Well, to be an ambassador of Christ, you are actually hired and sent out on the floor right away. You know, Serena uh, has been working at Chapman's, and one of the things that shocked her was um, how little time of training she had between getting hired and actually expecting to do the work. And it's funny because she's got a couple friends who've been hired from different places, and I guess they've expected that they'd have, like, weeks of training before, and it was like, oh, you're breathing? You're good? Get on there. There you go. <laughs> and they're just like, ah! <laughs> Well, that's what it is to be a Christian. Guess what? You're hired. Get out there and represent Jesus. Now, if that doesn't put pressure on you, let me throw some fuel on the fire. Jesus has also said that we are the light of the world. We are the light of the world. You know, often we, when we think about it, we think, well, Jesus is the light of the world. And that's true. He is. But Jesus was the one who said in Matthew 5, 14, that and when he was talking about disciples, when he was talking about his followers, and by the way, if you are a Christian, you are a disciple of Jesus because a disciple simply means a follower. Well, he was talking to his disciples and he said this. Let me share a few verses from Matthew 5, 14 to 16. You are... The light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. 
Now think back where we started on this message, okay? We were talking about the power of our tongues. We were talking about our speech and how hard it is to control our tongues. You, you want to know how hard it is? Just hit your thumb with a hammer to see what happens. We are the representatives of Jesus in this world, and yet we struggle with our mouths. I'm sure all of us can admit, at least to ourselves, that not everything that we say would be something that Jesus would say. I'm pretty sure that we've all messed up, and sometimes we've messed up really bad as representatives of Jesus. I'm reminded of the words that the Apostle Paul shared in the book of Romans when he talked about what he'd like to do versus reality. And he said, I do not understand what I do for what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. You ever have those times where you're going, why did I do that? <laughs> That's what Paul's talking here. I didn't want to do that, and I end up doing that. When it comes to our mouths, I don't know how many times I've looked back and gone, I lost my cool there. I said something I regret. James in our scripture gives us the litmus test that evaluates if we're actually doing what we're supposed to do when it comes to that job of representing Jesus. He says in verse 13, who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. So there's something important right there that we might be missing, that we might have been missing in our life, because we might have been doing this all by ourselves, trying to do it by our strength, to control our mouths just by sheer will. But guess what? The part that's missing is wisdom. Wisdom is the key that we're looking for in the idea of controlling our mouths and our actions. It's wisdom that helps us live right, to do right, to speak right. But what kind of wisdom are we talking about? We saw in our scripture that there's more than one kind. Wisdom has a connection to knowledge, but it's more than just knowing facts. Stephen Payne defined wisdom as the ability to deal successfully with the factors of life. I really like this quote. Wisdom is the ability to deal successfully with the factors of life. So you could have all the facts, right? You know, you could say be an accountant and know all the right things to do with your money, but your, your bank statement could be a complete mess, right? Because you got the knowledge, but you don't have the wisdom to apply that. So, James, so we know what wisdom is. James gives us a list of things that show when we're off track. That's another thing I kind of like about James. He shows you, hey, if you're going down this road, you're starting to get off track. He points out things like bitterness envy, selfish ambition. People who are living right, doing right, speaking right, living in wisdom won't be, by, be directed by those things that distract us from our job of representing who? Jesus. James says, for where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and, and every evil practice. Now, before you think that all we have to do is, you know, pull up our socks you know, if we just try harder, we'll live right, do right, speak right. You know, that's what we got to do. Uh, if you're going to go that way, I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to fail, right? You're going to fail. Uh, and we're going to, we all do that. I'm not just pointing fingers at you guys and I'm pointing fingers at me. If you're going by your own strength, you're going to fail. We need that extra help. We need that extra help. And uh, James talks about this, starting in verse 17. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is, first of all, pure and peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. You know, human history is full of examples in which people have shunned God. And they have aspired to perfect themselves and their societies by their own strength and wisdom people like friedrich uh, nietzsche or nietzsche sorry friedrich nietzsche he was a german philosopher i probably really messed up his name so hopefully he's not, not too angry with me but anyway the german philosopher born in 1875 who coined the phrase god is dead 
He did so as a way to express his belief in the enlightenment. And, and this was the idea of that, uh, this enlightenment was a possibility that uh, we, as a human society, could lift ourselves up beyond all the things that are terrible in this world. Friedrich uh, Nietzsche's teachings actually influenced another man uh, who adopted Germany as his country and who would later lead Germany down uh, a path uh, that was actually terrible. He followed these teachings of this human humanism teachings that we could be better and, and he turned away from God and he went down this path uh, that created chaos throughout the world. And this individual's name was Adolf Hitler, and we all know what he did. In his perverted sense of strength and wisdom, he ended up uh, uh, destroying and killing the lives of almost 6 million Jews, not including all the millions more that died in World War II. Now, humanism is a belief that humans, rather than God, are the most important things, and that through us and by our own strength and wisdom, we can solve all the world's problems. You just have to read the newspaper or watch the news on TV or see it online to see how much that stacks up. We're doing a terrible job of solving all the world's problems. On the other hand, James says the wisdom we need comes from heaven. It is inspired by God. It is given by God. It is God through his son, Jesus, who demonstrated this kind of wisdom perfectly. You look at Jesus's life and you see what heavenly wisdom is like. The kind of wisdom is this true wisdom. It is a wisdom that leads us to live holy lives. Holiness simply means set apart for God, okay? When we say you're living a holy life, you know what? That means you're just, you're living for God. It's one of those things that we should all desire to do. And it's one of those things as Christians we should be seeking with all of our hearts. If you're struggling to walk the talk or to control your tongue, then the, things you might be, the thing you might be missing in your life is this wisdom that comes from heaven. Yet, there's no need to fear. I don't want you leaving today going, well, I'm screwed. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing like that. Uh, I want you to know that you can have this wisdom. And God's word through his book of James even tells us how we can get this wisdom. And by the way, we've already looked at that when we looked at the book of James chapter 1. James chapter 1, verse 5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Just take a moment, just right now, to think of the problems you faced uh, today, you know, in this week that just went by. Just think of those things. Maybe you got frustrated and you lost it with your mouth, or maybe you had these problems in your life that was going on, and, and what, was your, what was your first reaction? How did you deal with those things? When I was uh, a few years, well, years ago now, it just seems like a few years, but years ago now, on one of the mission trips, short-term mission trips that I went on, uh, we were there to b help build an addition to this church, and we spent a day and a pile of money on supplies. We brought all that stuff to the job site, to the church. We're getting ready to build. Starting tomorrow, you know, shovels in the ground. We got there the next morning early. Almost all of the stuff that we had bought, thousands and thousands of dollars, were gone. Yeah. You know what? It wasn't far. You just looked over the fence. The neighbor had some. That neighbor had some. People just literally picked it up. And walked away and weren't even afraid to say, yeah, that's mine. I, I bought it, right? It sure looks like the stuff that I had yesterday. What was my first reaction? Start going, okay, how do we solve this problem? Let's open up our wallet, see what money we have. What can we do? And, you know, we got to go back to these places. You know what the people from Mexico did? They started praying. Ah, was I wise? You can say it. No. <laughs> Everyone's going, oh, shoot, <laughs> don't say that to the pastor. No. 
I mean, you think about this with yourself. You probably came up with a whole bunch of things this week because that's life, problems, challenges, and all that. And how did you try and solve them? Probably from the understanding that you had. What I'm telling you today is that you need to access that heavenly wisdom. And all you have to do is ask God for that. Take time this week to reflect on life. Think about your actions and your words. Try to make the commitment this week to yourself that before you act, before you react, before you lose it with your mouth, before something pops up, stop. Pray. See what happens. I'm telling you, you're going to be surprised. And with that, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you that through the... Through your son, we have seen what it means to live a life filled with wisdom. Lord, our hope is that we may live in such a way that we honor you in all that we do and in all the, way, the ways we say stuff. Lord, where we lack wisdom, we pray, fill us with your wisdom. Where we are weak, fill us with your strength. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. One final song.